baka machismis sila ng mga kapitbahay, no? nabuntis nung wala yung asawa. And I say, you know, it's really none of the business of the other people. Your business is your own business and, you know, whatever it takes uh, to get that uh, pregnancy. Hi, I'm Dr. Margaret Joyce Christy Limson. People call me Dr. Limson and I am from Manila. I am an OBGYN specializing in reproductive medicine, minimally invasive surgery. Infertility is the inability to conceive despite regular intercourse and patients and couples who are not using any form of contraception. Okay, so usually we would define a couple as being infertile if they have been trying for at least one year. Okay, so for women, there are a couple of factors that we look at. The first one, and it's just very common, is the, when patients do not ovulate, so when there is anovulation. So these patients usually present with uh, irregular menses, and a lot of patients are probably familiar with this term, no? polycystic ovary syndrome. So these patients, they do not ovulate. So in Filipino, hindi po sila nangingitlog. All right, so if there is no egg that comes out during the middle part of the cycle, then these patients will not get pregnant. Another common factor is when there are anatomic problems. So if there is a myoma or if there is significant endometriosis, so these patients will have anatomic difficulties when they're trying to get pregnant. Another factor is when there is a, a tubal block, so tubal factors. Now tubal factors are brought about usually by infection, and sometimes patients with endometriosis will also have tubal blocks. If there's a tubal block, then the egg and the sperm cannot meet inside. Okay? Another reason for infertility is when there is diminished ovarian reserve, or when we say that the egg count of the patient is actually low. And this is usually common for patients who are a bit older, which we term as advanced maternal age, so women who are more than 35 years old, because we know that the quantity and the quality of the eggs are both diminished. Okay? Now, there is a significant proportion of patients, despite testing and searching for a possible reason for infertility, we don't find any. And these are patients who we classify as having unexplained infertility, especially for those whose semen, uh, the, the partner, the semen is normal. A healthy lifestyle will definitely be always uh, beneficial for a patient, not just for fertility, but for overall health. Okay, lifestyle factors will, of course, number one, include a healthy diet. So what is a healthy diet? Okay, so for fertility, we, don't, uh, we ask the patients to shy away from highly um, processed food, okay? Reduce the intake of trans fat, and maybe get their proteins more from vegetables than from meat, okay? Exercise in moderation. So severe exercise, a no-no. So in moderation will also be good for patients with infertility. Of course, a big culprit, smoking, both for the, for the lady and for the, for the male. A big no-no, lots of things that it can uh, do to the body which will impair fertility, okay? How about coffee? This is a common question that we are asked. Maybe about one to two cups a day is okay, and, but anything more than that is not good. I would usually tell my patients, everything in moderation, nothing in excess. A lot of our patients are actually partners of overseas OFWs. So the husband is usually out of the country a lot of, uh, a lot for long periods of time. So let's say the couple has been together for five to 10 years, but when you start interviewing them, then you find out that they're only together maybe two to three months in a year. Now these patients actually, uh, you know, their chance to get pregnant is uh, really very slim if they're only together for short periods of time. One thing that I am able to educate them uh, to, te to teach them or to tell them about uh, is uh, that they can actually freeze sperm here in the Philippines. And then we can use it by using a certain technology which is called intrauterine insemination to inseminate the woman even when the husband is not around. 
Now, I know medyo baka machismis sila ng mga kapitbahay, no? na buntis nung wala yung asawa. And I say, you know, it's really none of the business of the other people. Your business is your own business and, you know, whatever it takes uh, to get that uh, pregnancy. Another thing, there are patients who are a bit older. There are patients who are a bit older and uh, a lot of infertility factors who cannot get pregnant. I tell them that uh, family is how you define it, okay? Family is how you define it. And if, it entail, if you cannot get pregnant using your own biologic egg and sperm, then we will, of course, adoption is also something that is an option as long as it's acceptable to the couple. Now, in terms of myths, no, they dance, uh, Obando, I tell them, you know, also concentrate on being intimate with your husband, with your partner, okay? A lot of patients, they will say that they are so busy that they do not have time to actually be intimate with their partner. And this is important. How regular is regular intercourse? You would say intercourse about two to three times in a week should be good. But uh, if you always set aside the uh, how can a couple get pregnant, right? So timing is also important, okay? Find time for each other. We also do see some patients who are really trying to get pregnant um, even when they are not yet classified as being infertile. Meaning in less than one year, they just got married, they're quite young. They say, Doctora, I want to get so and I think I need to have some workup done. I tell them, you know, enjoy the journey to get there, okay? Uh, about 87% of couples will get pregnant in one year, okay? So there's a high likelihood that you will be part of this statistic, okay? And the chance to get pregnant in one month is actually just really 20%. So it's really a try and try and try thing. And I tell them, you don't want to be stressed out with having to conceive. I tell them that infertility treatment actually removes the romance from lovemaking, okay? So I tell them to enjoy the journey and hopefully they will not need any treatment or any investigations for infertility. So in countries that are very industrialized and advanced, let's take a look at Singapore, where the priority is career, women will start a family at a later age. And a very important prognostic factor for fertility and the no it is actually the number one prognostic factor is actually the woman's age. When a woman hits 35, both the quantity and the quality of eggs start declining and the chance of pregnancy starts going down. So if you wait, if you wait, the longer you wait, then the chance of pregnancy becomes a bit slimmer. The ovarian reserve or how much eggs or how much money you have in your bank starts going down. And this is reversible. There's nothing we can do about that. The use of contraceptive pills is not only for contraception. Okay? We sometimes use this for other gynecologic problems, such as for patients who have abnormal menses, heavy bleeding, and the like. Now, people do ask us, Doctor, I don't want to take pills because it might actually decrease my chance or the likelihood of me getting pregnant in the future. Tell them this is not true. Okay? When you're taking the pill, then you are not fertile. But once you stop it, whatever your baseline state comes back. Now, if you do have a baseline problem of not being able to ovulate, let's say you have PCOS, the problem comes back when you stop taking the pill. And it is actually the underlying problem that can cause the difficulty in getting pregnant. And it's actually not the use of the pill. For infertility, the treatment will, of course, depend on the, the cost. A common medication that we will give is what I would call the fertility pill. So it is a clomiphene or letrozole, okay? So this is something that we give to, couple, uh, to a patient, the woman, for five days in a month to ensure that patients who actually do not ovulate, so those who do not have eggs that uh, actually grow during their cycle, and this, these drugs will promote ovulation or the growth of a dominant follicle that will eventually ovulate. So PCOS is a big factor and a lot of our patients are given these drugs, clomiphene or letrozole, for fertility. 
okay? Once they start ovulating, their chance to get pregnant is 20% per month, just like in a normal couple. Okay, another treatment will be, of course, uh, artificial insemination. Okay, so this is when uh, patients have, the lady has minimal or mild endometriosis, or the male has mild male factors. So the husband collects sperm, okay? And then the sperm that is collected is processed so to get the best swimmers. And we push it, the best swimmers into the uterine cavity, so that's intrauterine, and it's inseminated. So the sperm only has to travel a short distance to get to the egg. And the highest level of infertility treatment is in vitro fertilization or IVF. Now, as opposed to IUI, this is more invasive, okay? And it also costs about 10 times more, okay? So what we do is we hyperstimulate the patient. So instead of actually trying to get just one egg to grow in a month, we give them medications. So oral medications and injectables that we call gonadotropins. And we allow the whole group of uh, follicles to grow, not just one, okay? So we try to get as much as we can safely, okay? Then we get the, the eggs uh, transvaginally. So we poke the ovaries and try to get the egg from the follicles. And then on that same day in the lab, the husband's sperm is put together with the egg and the egg is already fertilized. And then we get our embryos. And these embryos are cultured for a couple of days, maybe three to five days, frozen or transferred in a fresh cycle. So that is the highest level of infertility treatment that we offer now. Okay, success will really depend on a lot of factors, okay? So the first factor, again, is a woman's age. So a younger woman is generally because she has a better uh, egg count and a better quality of eggs and the, the, we expect a better yield, a better outcomes for these couples. The second prognostic factor will be the time they have been trying to conceive. So in a couple who has only been con trying to conceive for maybe one to two years, their chance of getting pregnant is probably higher than a couple who has been infertile for about eight to 10 years. Okay, for those patients who have prolonged infertility for those couples, then there is obviously an underlying issue, a big underlying issue why they are not getting pregnant. The third prognostic factor is a history of a previous pregnancy. So if this patient has already gotten pregnant before, then we think that her likelihood of getting pregnant again is quite high as compared to those who have what we call primary infertility or have not never been pregnant before. Again, the chance of getting pregnant will depend on the identifying factor, the treatment that is offered to the couple, and uh, all the other variables that are um, investigated by the clinician. Some of the associated side effects with intake of the medications, the oral medications and the injectables used for fertility treatment will include nausea, vomiting, okay, bloatedness, headache, okay, and some, some mood changes, okay, so husbands beware. Okay, but um, not a lot of uh, patients will actually complain of these side effects. Okay, they are actually very well tolerated. Okay, for for IVF, the worst uh, out uh, worst side effect is actually what we call ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So this is a very uh, dangerous uh, condition where the very elevated hormones in a woman's body will cause uh, fluid accumulation in other parts of the body. And this is actually a life-threatening or a possibly critical case. So knowing um, or having a good provider uh, who is very knowledgeable about fertility treatment should be able to um, help you overcome or at least ameliorate or help you uh, get over uh, this syndrome if it actually occurs. Another thing that patients actually come up to us and uh, ask for is to have twins. Now, you know, uh, multiples or twins, triplets, uh, it's not something that we actually aspire for when we do fertility treatment. We want one baby at a time because this is, uh, uh, we, we expect uh, better outcomes in terms of the live birth rates and better fetal outcomes in the end. Okay, one baby at a time, right? And of course, the other associated uh, risks uh, will be bleeding, infection, when we do some procedures for these patients as well.
best advice, okay, we go back to being healthy. Being healthy. Leading a healthy lifestyle is, of course, very, very important. Of course, choosing a doctor that will be able to help you, someone who is knowledgeable about infertility, will be very important. If a couple has been trying for one year, we recommend do not delay. Seek consult with your uh, infertility doctor. In patients who have known infertility factors such as endometriosis, irregular menses, PCOS, um, patients who have already undergone ovarian surgery, or maybe even those who already underwent chemotherapy or radiotherapy, it would be best to seek consult even earlier, maybe as early as about three to six months when they're trying to conceive. We do our best to help these, uh, these patients, okay? But we can only do so much depending on the state and what it is that they can give us, how many eggs they have to give, and then we are able to work with what we have. Music